Hello, everyone. Um, th thank you. Th thank you very much for, for coming. I know it's I know it's a very very busy time. There are many things that are going on at this time. So thanks for taking the time for that. And also, I, I'd like to uh, I'd like to talk to the students who who are here right now. It's it's, it's actually it's very good and very important that that you attend th these types of talks because my hope is that it gives you an opportunity to hear about the things that you learn, but you know sort of more what what, what really happens out there. And also, then I'd like to th thank. Claudia for, for the introduction, and also, and also Jennifer for, for her talk. And I'll be picking up on some of the topics that, that she raised, including some of the definitions. And also, there will be a little bit about the weather as well, in fact. <laughs> what I'm going to talk to you ab about is, is, is about chemicals that, that are found in, in plants. And I'm going to make the link about some of the potential for wellness that, that comes from those. And that's really, uh, on the spectrums that, that you heard about, there are many, many layers to, to, to wellness, especially for the parts that were said at the end in, in Jennifer's talk. But there's also chemicals that sometimes become very, very good medicines as well. And, and this talk is going to be about the connections between some of the plants, which this, this is, um, th these, these are flowers which, which we gathered. It was, uh, it was during summer, it was in June, and, you know, a beautiful day when, they, when the flowers do come out, which on themselves are, are actually quite nice and part of a, and really p part of the wellness as well. I mean, who, who doesn't like flowers? But there are also, there are chemicals in here, and this is what I would like to tell you a little bit more about. In, in order to, to understand it, uh, what I'd, I'd like to do is I'd just like to tell you a bit more uh, about where I'm from. Be, beyond the introduction, I wanted to go into a bit more detail because it actually, I think it will give a perspective as to how and why we're seeing s some of these things. So as, as Claudia said, I, I was born here. And I attended the University of Lethbridge. And, and the reason why that's important, because so that means I was born on the prairies. And so I have this view of, of the prairies, which I held for a long time. And part of that was that I thought it would be very good for parking lots, really. I mean, it's just so, <laughs> it's, it's just so flat. And then, and then I left. And, and I left. For, for a long time. I used to say I left for half my life, but now it doesn't add up anymore, in fact. <laughs> but, but it really was for, for a very, very long time. And during that long time, I met some very smart people. And one of the things that all of them told me to do was to observe. And so that's, that, that's, that's an easy message that, that, that I kept. The, the other thing um, from, from leaving was that um, I worked in the pharmaceutical industry. And that, um, th that actually impacted um, the way that I viewed some parts of science, not all parts of science, but some parts, was that the, the pharmaceutical industry is the place that makes medicines. Many of the medicines, and even the products, the well-being products that, that, that we use, and, so, and you'll see some of that will come up. And then there was a, a, the third thing from, from leaving, which is very important, was that I, so, so I lived in Europe for over two decades. And in Europe, there are many countries, and, and in all of those countries, and, and France is, is one very good example of it, the, the people who live there, all of them, are much, much closer to natural products that, that we are in, in Canada, much more. And then with that, we, we came back. And, and with Dr. Sophie Kernis, or Sophie as I'll be calling her from now on, who's actually here, when, that time she was at the University of Lethbridge, now she's at Lethbridge College, together we started what is the, called the Prairie to Pharmacy Program. And the one thing that we noticed when we came back, and that's why it was important to tell you where I was from, and what I went through was that there's this big gap, largely in, in Canada and the US, between natural products and, and wellness. And I can see some of you are actually nodding. You, you actually know this. In fact, um, around the world, 70% of the people who live on the planet, they're, they're first, the first thing that they turn to when they're not feeling well are natural products. And that's not just, I'm not talking about undeveloped nations. I'm talking about you know, many, many countries in Europe and, and across, across the, in Asia and, and across the globe. And that's not something that we really think or, or, talk, or talk about here. And there's, there's many good things about that. We, um, throughout time, throughout the history, you know, I would even say through recorded history, there, there is a very, very close relationship. And one of the purposes of, of our research is actually to try to, to fill this gap. And I'll tell you a bit more about that as well. Okay? It's not that hard to do, because all of us know about natural products. It's just sort of the context of what we have, for, you know, for, for example. And so some of you actually have already shown this to you, so don't, don't yell it out right away. <laughs> this is a natural product. It's actually present in many, that, that's a very good buffet type thing. There's some very good healthy things there for that. 
and it's present in some of those as well. Here's your clue, right? Vitamin C, of course. Vitamin C, which I actually took one this morning. Normally I don't, but I knew I was going to be giving a talk, you know, so I turned to something, so I grabbed the vitamin C this morning. Why, why not? It's a very, very good natural product. Here's another one. You might recognize this. Clue, right? You know, caffeine, of course. Caffeine is, is a very, very popular one. And, you know, and normally I wouldn't drink it in the afternoon, but, you know, but, you know who likes decaffeinated coffee, right? No, we, we like coffee, and we like the, the natural products that comes with it. And I would drink decaffeinated coffee if it was late in the day, not, but not, certainly not in the morning. Nothing like a boost of coffee to get us going. So we're all familiar at some point or, or other with, with natural products, but I think we can go much, much further in, in the science and in our appreciation of natural products here in Canada. And that was the basis for, the, um, for, the, for what we called, Sophie and I, the, the, the Prairie to Pharmacy program. Our, our goals were, were rather straightforward. The, the first thing was the science. Okay, we're, we're, we're scientists and, and we're at the University of Lethbridge. And that is to fill the knowledge gap about natu natural products in this area. Our, our second goal is in recognition that we need new medicines. Um, so as was, as was allu alluded to a little bit earlier in, in Jennifer's talk, as we age, that cr chronic diseases become, um, become more and more prominent. And there is a need for some very, very serious um, chronic diseases that are out there. In particular, my laboratory focuses on cancer. So I've been trained as a cancer research scientist, and I've worked on cancer research for, for a very, very long time. And out of the whole Prairie to Pharmacy program, that, that's really the one topic that we deal with all, all the time. And to, to our big surprise, the plants in southern Alberta had not been previously tested for anti-cancer activity. And that's why I told you the story about where I was from, because I've worked in the pharmaceutical industry, and I was, I was part of teams that would organize other teams within the company that would send at great expense and a great effort, send scientists really to the other side of the world to go to places where they could find natural products, especially plants, then bring them all the way back and, and with all the logistical problems and difficulties that, that come with that. So I, I was a sort of attuned to that idea and really took, it was actually a barrier to starting, is that, that we had trouble to even believe that the, you know, where, where, we're, where we're parking is, has been, there are plants that, um, that had never been tested for activity. And the very important thing is that the University of Lethbridge actually supported this project. They have a program to which you can apply, the University of Lethbridge Research Fund. Um, and, and then they, they, they gambled on us. They, um, you know, we presented an idea where, um, which was really aside from the current projects that we were working on, and we, so we had no data, just a, just a lot of motivation, and, and they bet on it. And I'd like to show that actually that, that has worked. And, but that was important to, to get the whole thing started. So it's six years already. Right. So why look for um, new medicines, which are natural products, in, in plants? Well, the, the scientific reasons are, are very simple for that. In cancer, the number one anti-cancer compound in the world comes from a plant. The number two anti-cancer compound in the world comes from a plant. The number three, do you get where I'm going with this? Anti-cancer compound also comes from a plant. It's, it's demonstrated all over for all sorts of indications. Cancer is uh, under the category of, of medical terminology. It's a major indication. All the best compounds have come from plants in the past. And that, that goes really across the spectrum. And you may know of other medicines as well that, that, will, um, that, that, that will come from plants. So that's, that's one of the ver very big reasons. The other is, is that I think we know that as well too, right? You've, as, some of you are young enough to, to remember this, you know, eat your vegetables, right? <laughs> the, the idea, we hear still, you know, we, we receive very good advice from government agencies concerned about our health, which is, you know, have, what is it, five servings of, of fruits or vegetables every day. Of course, those are plants. You know, but when they're beside a box of 50 Timbits, I mean, which ones are you, which ones are you <laughs> going to pick? But, but we do know that for that. And that's, this is this gap. That, that, that I would like to fill, especially with, with a little bit here from Southern Alberta. So Southern Alberta then becomes the big question. There's no doubt all over the planet people are looking for plants that have medicines. 
But about the weather, you know, why look for plants in southern Alberta? So this was, um, I, I took this photo just a few days ago, the 4th of February. And yes, I heard someone say, oh, what a, what a beautiful day today. Well, I mean, really? <laughs> <laughs> it, it was minus 40 at night with the wind chill. You know, I, I had to plug in our car, otherwise it wasn't, it, it, may, not, it may not start, right? It's, it is cold. And a few days ago, this is what it looked like, minus 24 in the afternoon. And yes, you know, there are signs of plants that were one th once there, but you'd have to wonder, are they ever going to come back, right? <laughs> it's, it's like that. So why look for plants in southern Alberta? And, and there is a very, very good scientific reason for doing it. And, and really, we're, we're, we're scientists, and that's where we stay closest to. And the reason is, is because the, the prairie region of which Alberta is found has a a simple ecological system and that there are there are and were very large mammals the buffalo which were almost immediately replaced with cattle and then some of the animals that you know such as the, the, the pronghorn that, that we see here and and others that are, these are large hungry mobile animals the herbivores they eat plants and the plants in competition fight back and they fight back by producing chemicals. And they actually produce very special chemicals. Those chemicals are called secondary metabolites. And those are the chemicals that we decided to, to look for in this region. So yes, you know, it doesn't have the biodiversity that we would see elsewhere on the planet by any, by any means whatsoever. But the plants that are here, in fact, the reason why we're able to see them summer after summer is because they produce very special chemicals that affect mammals. And we, of course, are, are mammals, and those are the ones that we're trying to get. But there's another very important region, reason, and, and Claudia, um, uh, when, when she in introduced the, 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 the talk today, she rightly, of course, stated that we are, um, we are on Treaty 7 territory, the historical territory from the Blackfoot Confederacy. So since time immemorial, the peoples of who were here before had actually used the chemicals, they used the plants, that were, that were in this region for many of, of their health and, and wellness. And, um, and so in, 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 in my laboratory, we're, we're actually trying to, we're trying to bridge that, that part as well. And it's important because I guess the, 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 the professional term is that I hold um, a, a, Western, a Western scientific view. And when I say we don't know about the chemicals here, of course, that, in the end, that's not really true. There is a great traditional knowledge that is in this region as well. And we're, and we're hoping that this project is actually going to be a, a way to exchange that. And I would say maybe even a very interesting way to exchange it because it's not just one person saying that they know more than the other person. It really is two groups that, that know something and now come in as equals with the opportunity to, to share for it. Uh, um, I'm going to profit from the situation. Uh, the announcement was made just last week. Um, we'll, we'll be having a new chancellor who, who will be inaugurated at the, at, at the convocation um, in, in this coming, in, at the end of April, this coming May. And, and I, I, I took the liberty to, to, to take some of his texts, which he stated when he was talking about the University of Lethbridge and, and, and the, 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 the indigenous peoples who are, who are here. And he said, if we grow together, the, the sky is the limit. And, and I put that down because I hope that this project will, will be part of that. I really believe that, that, that by working together, this might be quite something. But that's, that's the other reason. Okay, so now I'll come to, to the, some of the more of the science, but behind it as well. And that is, um, what we did then, is then we then analyzed all the plants that are present, that, that, that have been do already documented that grow in Alberta. You know, and here, we're, we're lucky. There, there are, there's, it's not that many, really, especially. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you can see that from the photos. But we looked at that list very, very carefully. And then we, we, using several different types of criteria, what we did is then we would collect them, and we collect them through sustainable harvest. We follow some very, very strict guidelines and rules about how that is done. And, um, and, and what we're going to do as well is we're going to make the step is that we're, we're now launching a project where we're also going to include the Blackfoot name while we collect these. I'd like to add, we've been fortunate that we have members um, for, for, from, the, for, for, um, for, from the Blackfoot Confederacy. A number of them have actually taught us how to do an offering even before we collect the plants. And then we're going to use the name for them as well, and we'll carry that name all the way through our scientific studies. 
we collect the plants, and then we use a variety of, te of techniques to remove the chemicals from the plants. And those chemicals, once we have them, that becomes the extract library. And that's a very, very valuable resource for the University of Lethbridge. It's annotated, traceable, and validated. So that's some of the training that I've picked up from the pharmaceutical industry. Because if we want to share these resources with others, we have to ensure that they're of very high quality so that people get the best results that are possible from that. To date, we have 350 extracts. We think once we hit 1,000, then we will have documented all of those chemicals that are present in this ecological zone. And we're hoping to do that within two years. And then there's people. We rely heavily on some of the experts. For example, Professor John Bain, um, who is the director of the University Herbarium. He's actually one of the persons who helps validate some of the information that we have. And I'm happy to say the University of Lethbridge decided to keep the herbarium, which not all universities do. And it will be in the new science building. And I'd like to highlight something else about some of the people who are here. Um, we have a number of students from Mexico, Italy, Brazil, the Netherlands, Switzerland, and Lila, who is here, from Venezuela. This is interesting as well because um, they're bringing their expertise to here. And it changes a little bit of, about the way we work. It's not, yes, the University of Lethbridge trains, but we're also bringing knowledge, that, as I mentioned, because the other, most of the planet actually knows quite a bit about natural products. And so we're, we're benefiting fr from that, and I hope benefiting from the community. We also have some local <coughs> members who have been quite helpful volunteers here as well. And don't worry, I, I know them quite well. They're not dangerous. So which one is it? And that's what we do day to day in the lab. These are chemicals that we isolated from one of the plants in the lab. And um, rather than guessing, we test it. And it's this one, PPH51C12. And that comes from then, now we're really bringing some of our scientific experience to it. And we set up test, experimental test, in which we'll say, OK, if we're looking for an anti-cancer type of activity, then we're going to design an experiment around that. And then all of these were tested. And this is the one that had the activity in which we were interested. I'm going to show you two quick examples. The very first plant that we tested is the buffalo bean, Thermopsis rhombofolia. It's really limited to northern Montana and to, to the south. Um, in Canada, it would be to the south end of the prairies. And we were able to track the attention of a pharmaceutical company with the University of Lethbridge. We have a patent on it. A test quickly showed us that it inhibits. Uh, this is now quite deep into the science, but that's an enzyme that turns out to be important in multiple myeloma and leukemia. And that was from our very, very first plant. It turns out the chemical, uh, it's probably not going to go the whole distance. Not this one. But we learned a lot from it, and it helps us build up partnerships. And like always with learning, we go step by step further and further. Here's another one. So this is the hemonoxus. Uh, we actually collected this just a little bit, it's by the neuroscience building, if you really want to know where it is. And it's a rather inconspicuous plant, and it only lasts for about a week. And so if you don't get it, right, that's why it helps to be here, then you're going to have to wait till next year. And this was work from Lila. Um, it was actually through her master's thesis. And she, she worked very, very hard on it. And she collaborated with um, a natural product chemist from the University of British Columbia. And they identified the molecule. And it stops cancer cells from dividing. We have a lot more hope on this one, basically because we've learned many things from it. And it opens us a class of chemicals present in plants here as we go forward. Okay, I'm going to end with a few things. Right? I see some of you smile when you see this. Of course you do, right? That's, that's part of the wellness. That's just you know, these many layers of wellness that, that come through from here. There's another way to look at them. One is this. It's, yes, I, I do realize they're beautiful flowers, but we also look at many different things. And at Lethbridge College and here at the university, we're trying to examine these. And that goes, I mean, a, a beautiful scent from a flower is also very important for health and wellness. I was, I was actually, I do want to go back to that. We're, we're, we would like to put a lot of science into this as well. There are very important projects that can be done in genomics on these projects and natural product chemistry and the ecology from it as well. Okay, then just to end, so where are we going with this? Well, 
you know, ha having, having seen different places and, and work in different areas, one thing that I realized, it's very important to be competitive and strategic. And that's why I think this is a project that I very much like to develop completely here, because we're in the right place for it. The plants grow here. We have very, very good contacts with people who know about the plants as well. I think that's very important. And it's Southern Alberta is known for its strengths in agriculture. So we're trying to cultivate some of these plants as well. And so we're proposing now to the university to build the Alberta Natural Product Institute, which will fill that gap, but fill that gap with, with science. So I'm gonna end with this. So, so what can you do, right? Well, th there's actually quite a bit. Um, uh, for, for the students here, you know, how many natural product courses do we offer at the U of L? Okay, the answer is none. How many at University of Calgary? Zero. Alberta, none. Ask for it. Ask for a course, and we'll, and we'll, we'll do it, right? I think, I think we need it. The other part is that we need to protect the land, right? I've, you've heard this, of course, many times for many different reasons, but in fact, we don't even know how valuable or how, how much we need those plants yet. And so, and so we need to, to do that. And the final thing is when, when it, natural products is a very, very broad field, always ask for the science for it. So I'm not talking about traditional knowledge. That's, that's different. That, that works on its own. But when someone's trying to sell you something in natural products, ask for the science. And that's part of that gap. Because again, in France, the, the, have you ever seen how expensive cosmetics are in France, right? It's because they spend so much on the research for it. They know exactly what those natural products do and what they don't do. And that's what makes them very, very safe and very, very effective. It's the science. And of course, we're at the university or Lethbridge College, and that's the thing that we can probably do best. Many people have helped already. I, I'd like to list some of their, some of their names here for, from my laboratory. Um, We've also had funding from various sources, including supported by the University of Lethbridge, CFI, and CERC Council of 12. A number of people have actually helped for this. And um, thank you for your attention.